Amen. Hallelujah. So this righteousness is by faith in the sacrifice of Jesus. So it doesn't have anything to do with, uh, with your human performance. It doesn't have anything to do with you trying to be good. You see, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Yes, you should be good, but it doesn't have anything to do with you trying to be good. So is you accepting that Jesus has done this for me and resting your case on what he has done for you? Let's look at Romans 10. Compare it to what Paul just told us in Philippians 3 9. Romans 10 from verse 1. He said, My brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. See, they had a zeal for God, but their zeal for God is not according to the right knowledge of God. Verse 3. For they be ignorant of God's righteousness are going about to establish their own righteousness. That is a big mistake. Because they don't know God's righteousness, they are going about to establish their own righteousness. Because you don't know that God has helped you, you are going about trying to help yourself. God has already helped you. All you need to do is just believe that he has already helped you. You face the circumstance, God has already helped me. You have a desire, God has already helped me. And so you stay on that, in that place that God has already helped me. And then you see the manifestation of the kingdom. So these people, the Jews, because they were ignorant of God's righteousness, they went about establishing their own righteousness, self-righteousness. And because of that, he said they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. Don't forget, Paul said the kingdom of God is righteousness. Peace and joy. It's righteousness. And so we need to submit ourselves to God's righteousness. By understanding what God's righteousness is. That this righteousness, being declared righteous in the Son of God, is not dependent on you. But on what he has done for you. And so if he has done it for me, then I am qualified for the best. Hallelujah. So I'm not going to look at myself say because I'm a woman, I cannot get the position of the general managing director. Oh, there are a lot of men here. So I'm, I'm, how do I get the No, you don't disqualify yourself. Because God has declared you righteous. Hallelujah. Every sense of I'm not worthy, say I can't make it, I can't do it, is self-righteousness. Every self-condemnation is based on self-righteousness. Every self-condemnation is based on self-righteousness. But when you know that it is the righteousness of God that has been imputed to your own account because you believed in Christ Jesus, you believed in what he has done for you. You submit yourself to that righteousness. You live your life by that righteousness. You become righteousness conscious. Hallelujah. So when Jesus was talking about seeking God's kingdom, he's talking about becoming righteousness conscious. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This is his righteousness. The righteousness that comes by faith in the sacrifice of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that means God looks at you and says you are not guilty of any offense because you believe in Jesus. That is what it means. You are acquainted of all wrongdoing. Of all offenses. Hallelujah. And when you are acquainted, it means you are free to enjoy all the goodness of God. And so when anything crosses your mind, so because of the kind of family in which, from which I was born, that is why I'm suffering the way I'm suffering, or because of the person I married, that is why I'm suffering what I'm suffering, or because of this. Anytime you are given any excuse for why something may be happening negatively in your life, you are walking in self-righteousness. You have not submitted yourself to the righteousness of God. Because everything should work well in your life. 
because you are no longer under condemnation. You are no longer under the sentence of death. God has acquainted you of all offenses, of all wrongdoing, and he has declared you not guilty, justified you. And so you have access to everything. So when, when we find our lives that things are happening the way we don't want it, we stay in the consciousness of this righteousness. I'll just give two little examples from two ladies. One of them was to preach in a meeting that I attended. As she was introduced to start to minister, it was clear that she was feeling inadequate as she climbed the pupit. But what did she do? Because that feeling of inadequacy is self-condemnation. Self-righteousness. You are condemning yourself. So what did she do? Very simple. She began to confess on the microphone as worship to God. My sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. She kept saying that. Why is she saying that? She's bringing herself to the place of being righteousness conscious. Because somehow maybe the crowd or whatever, the quality of the meeting is making her to say, I'm not qualified and she's feeling a little bit fearful or whatever. No, she, she switched from that self-condemnation into the consciousness of her right standing with God. My sins are forgiven. In other words, God has nothing against me. I have, I'm not under condemnation because my sins are forgiven. And she did extremely well in her teaching and message that day. The other lady, she came to the pupit <laughs> and she finally said that she looked awkward in the dress that she was wearing. So apparently, as uh, she came to church and she discovered that this dress, maybe there's a mismatch, she was no longer feeling comfortable about it. But as she made a statement about the dress she was wearing, she declared also with her mouth, my sins are forgiven. Why? Why, are they, why both of them, why did they do this? Because they understand that it's not about them. It's not about the mistakes they have made. It is about the forgiveness of God. It is about God who have declared them righteous. My sins are forgiven. It helps you to come to the place where you are conscious that Jesus has done it for me. You go for an interview, you feel inadequate because maybe you didn't dress the way you should have dressed or, or whatever. Your qualifications, your, the, uh, qualifications you have to present may not be what they, they require. Maybe they needed or they need higher qualifications. Tell yourself, my sins are forgiven. Bring yourself to the place where you become conscious of God's righteousness because he has done it for you. Praise the Lord Jesus. It has been done for you. That is what Paul tells He doesn't want to be found having his own righteousness. But the Jews made a mistake of not finding out God's righteousness. So they went ahead, established their own righteousness, and when they did that, they missed out of God's righteousness. They did not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. You need to submit yourself to God's righteousness. You need to believe that you have been declared righteous. You need to stay in the consciousness that you have been declared righteous. Hallelujah. That nothing no longer stops you from receiving from God. 